She you're wants not, to make sure people realize you're just human and not a cyborg. You're not a wizard, Maya. Yeah, this is nothing that has, uh, <laughs> and his dad to you, sauce. Uh, <laughs> that did good. <laughs> This is Unposit, a podcast by a family of geeks. I'm Lady Disdain, and I'm 43 years old. I am the sauce underscore, and I am 11 teen. <laughs> underscore, the data bites. Faulty one. I am Furious Girl, and I am nine. This is an immediate reaction podcast immediately after seeing the theater release of an Avengers movie. That's the first instance that this has happened in our whole rundown of doing uh, movie reviews. So there are going to be spoilers in this podcast all throughout. If you have not yet seen this movie, you should stop (laughs) and only start it up again after you have seen Black Panther, unless, again, you don't care about spoilers, but that's what you're about to get here. Right. Three, two, one, here we go. This is our Black Panther podcast. Unposit number 975. Lies. Lies. (laughs) Uh, Don't know which one this is. This is actually going to be in order. So if you're listening to this podcast, it it should be numbered at what point it occurs in the release order of the Avengers Marvel series. Number 18. Is it number 18? It says it right there on our window. Oh, brilliant. So this is number 18. Okay. Number 19 will be Avengers Infinity War. Number 17 was Thor Ragnarok. Just kind of bookending this movie here. This is a... Spoilers Rife podcast. Spoilers Rife podcast. I was talking about the movie itself, though. Ah. It is a spiritual sequel to Captain America Civil War. Yes. Insofar as that's where Black Panther, T'Challa, and T'Chaka are introduced to us as audience members. We see them there. We see the catalyst for the coronation of T'Chaka. T'Challa. T'Challa. <laughs> T'Challa. T'Chaka. Hey, okay, and L are very close T'Challa. in the alphabet. You can forgive me if I mess that up. I could not even say Nokia. I kept saying Nokia, and the phone kept popping up in my head. And the phone is very tough, too. Hi. What? The phone There's a phone tough. older than you that would still work. That's there. true. <laughs> oh, my God. Right, we have just seen Black Panther... In the theaters. We saw it at probably not a very good theater. Yeah, I left a Facebook review for them. We went to the Denver Pavilions United Artists Theater. We've been there before. Just, I swear, guys, do better. The projection we have decided, I I mean, really, I want to go see this movie again at another theater because the projection on the screen was, was, was lacking. Speaking of that, I felt disappointed in the movie because the end battle was very Spider-Man 3. It was choppy. I couldn't see what's going on. And I think that was actually the theater because I watched a Mm -hmm. small excerpt uh, without sound just to get my mind refreshed on the movie, and it was clear as a bell on my iPad. We're going to have to go see it again. Yeah, we're going to have to see it again. And we will buy this movie because we buy all these movies, and we're doing podcasts and movies like this. Mm -hmm. And we will watch it on our 4K TV downstairs in the... uh, Geek Den. Or First, we're call and that. then we'll probably watch it upstairs on our other TV. We'll watch it lots, lots of probably. watching. Probably. We'll then, probably watch Thor Ragnarok next, so that's coming out next on the old videos. And the cat, yeah. and the cat will watch us with us, hopefully. I mean, he didn't watch uh, the last one that we had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is uh, starring Chadwick Boseman, Michael P. Jordan, Lupita Nyong'o. Martin Freeman is in this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, looking at everyone, Forrest Whitaker, Andy Serkis, Angela Bassett. And Batman. Yeah. She killed that role, to be she honest. She did. Uh, yeah. I don't think any one of the characters was poorly written. We're going to talk about... I've seen questions on the old inner Google webs. Yeah, should uh, Martin Freeman's character, Everett K. Ross, even have been in the movie? I think so. It was a it was a small tether, but a tether nonetheless. Back to uh, what was going on in the storyline and stuff. He was a figure in Civil War where you weren't sure if he was on their side or not. And at the end of this movie, you definitively feel like he is on the side of least of the Wakandans. But he's a good guy. He's a mostly. good guy. But you didn't and he know might be that. conflicted with his duty. Yeah. It got slow in the middle. And we're going to get back yeah, to that. Yeah, we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about that. But I want to ask you kids a question. 
what if in the next movie, Infinity War, we have Everett K. Ross in this movie next to Doctor Strange, and we have a Doctor Watson and Doc and Sherlock Holmes <laughs> meeting of the same actors in the same movie playing different characters? Yay! <laughs> Yay! That would make the kids happy. Yeah. This movie did not make the kids happy. Well, is that yes, true? it did. No, now hold on, because I feel like we're also going off the fact that one of us started having stomach flu within hours of seeing the movie. Right. But, um, yeah, we'll talk about the ratings, I think. Well, yeah, we can talk about the ratings going through for the same. I'd like to say something. Okay. You have me wrong. I think the movie was a very good movie. I rated it, like, what? Eight Don't wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so tell him he's wrong when we get to that point. When we get to that point. But Great. as far as talking to you about it, trying to get any information out of you, you don't tell me anything. Thor Ragnarok, you wouldn't you wouldn't shut up about hey, it. it hey, <laughs> you know, you know, th- this doesn't change the fact that you're wrong. Well, it kind of, th- I don't know if you don't talk to me. Well, well I'm talking to you right now. I know. And I talk all the time Oddly about enough, it. Oddly enough, we're all talking about it right yes, at this moment. Dad, so yes, Dad, yes. But we have things called pre-production meetings. <laughs> breakfast and dinner a little bit of the movie specs it's so far after four days made almost 240 million dollars <laughs> we'll awesome. see what the drop off is in the second weekend as far as repeat viewing i want to see it again in a better theater mm-hmm. i'm gonna wait till it's on less expensive showings uh maybe a five dollar showing or something like that yeah we could. um because i don't need to see it sit through two hours and 14 minutes of this movie again plus the nine trailers they put at the beginning and the credits, which this theater opened up the lights and turned the lights on before even the mid credit scene. I was like, are y'all new? What's going on? When we get the favorite scenes, I thought this suffered a bit of DC-itis. Insofar, it was a little bit too long and verbose. It could have had more action interspersed and told the same story. I uh, wished there was not the end battle scene, but there was more the end challenge was finished one-on-one again. But that goes into personal preference. Okay, okay. Guess villain. Not. Let's talk about the villain, played by Michael B. Jordan. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Who was in another Ryan Coogler, who directed this movie, movie Creed. What did you kids think of Killmonger? Poop. <laughs> poop is what she says. What did you think of Killmonger? Super poop. So you did not like the villain? Did wow. not like it Colored because green. he was evil? Colored green. And played it well? Or Dude. just didn't like the way that... Well, that's because he drank a lot of Gatorade. Do Y'all that. don't don't listen to this podcast if you're <laughs> eating or anything. And that, is, and that is the last reference to that. So can I ask a question? Did you not like the villain because you didn't like what he was doing to the world and like how he was being a villain? Or did you not like... Like the guy who was doing the villain. Like how how did you how do you not like him? Was he a jerk? Like was uh, he a jerk villain? One, I didn't like the way he communicated. Right. That, that's like how I'm saying it. Don't say it. Okay. Well, I'm trying to okay. I'm trying to clarify for our audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he, I also he had some tude for sure. I right. also didn't like. Yes, he did have attitude. I also didn't like him because he's like that. Uh, when he sits down on the throne, he's like. <sighs> So I, like, it sounds no, like you didn't like, you You know, he did. He came in and did what a villain's supposed to do, which is like, ah, uh, what are you doing? Oh. You know, you like you have that kind of reaction to what he's right. doing to the world. Right. And we don't live in the inner city of Chicago, L.A., or New York, where perhaps you would hear more language like that. We live in a very blue-collar, white neighborhood. <laughs> I, I think what made it so stark is because, not Tony Stark, we were immersed during the movie in Wakanda where you're hearing them speak, you know, as normal vernacular in their tribes, and then you do get this Killmonger coming in from his, uh, the, the hood streets, in L.A., the of, and uh, he's speaking Oakland, that, yeah. and I, I am a little, that's something I am more familiar with. I feel like I hear that way more than what I would have heard from the Wakandans, but by then, you've heard, you know, you're almost, you're over halfway through the movie, you've heard the Wakandans speak, and now that's a bit like, whoa, and partly, I think, that was a huge part of when he comes in and says, I want the throne, and they're like, who are you? You don't, You are not royalty like us. You know, there was a, I think that was crucial to make that a stark difference between Killmonger, where right. he was coming from. No, and I like office. it, and I like the way he spoke. I think that is hard for someone who hasn't grown up in that situation. Out of Oakland is where he was, not L.A. Um, right, sorry. You know, it did produce the stark contrast between an erudite, aristocratic king and a mm-hmm. royal blood street thug that's how he had to grow up Mm -hmm. after his father was murdered which is a giant turn for uh t'challa in this movie 
which I thought drew out a lot of character. There was so much character in this movie. Uh, so let's rate the Killmonger kids. Out of ten. Out of ten. Just two. Two? Just like a two. Point five. And I give them a strong eight. Mm-hmm. You know... I think that comes from actually being older than you kids. Yep. And that, that's part of this podcast is to see the difference between different eyes. I feel like I'm not related to you. Well, oh, wow. I feel that a lot until you say something. <laughs> and I'm like, I would say that. Great living with more than one of you. Uh, no. uh, I, I also give him a strong, I would say 8.5 for a villain. I, I really liked how they they show you why he's a villain. They show right. you where he came from. And you do. You do not like him. You do not like how he comes in swooping in, acting like he's all that. He, but there are the villains that you're just like, God, oh, you make me so mad. And he fulfilled that perfectly, I thought. So 8.5. Right. Killmonger, for me, ends up in the top 10 villains. Mm-hmm. As, and me as well. We, you and I both, after, right. after seeing Black Panther and compiling this list, it was like, he made it up there. He was good. Right. But he did not end up in the top 10 villains for the children. He did not. So maybe that's why I was getting they didn't like the movie, because they did not like Killmonger. You know, but I, I have heard that um, in the couple of things I've seen of reactions of the movie and such, uh, friends and, and people who've seen it, I have heard people say, I, I don't know that it's necessarily Killmonger, but it's the actor that the, he was not their favorite part. Um, so it's it's not wow. like the kids are alone in that. Um, I can see that. And he plays such a hardcore... He, he comes from a broken home, not broken because his father left him. There's no infrastructure to a support group for men to be men in that culture. You're afraid of the cops. You, have, you get shot yeah. just because you're wearing a hoodie. Things like that. So you can yeah. see that. And the anger comes out in this actor. He did a great... Uh, the, the scene where he is becoming the Black Panther and they bury him and he has his soul moment. I thought he nailed that part. You just feel the, he's angry at his dad, but he misses his dad and he's upset about his state. And his dad is just so broken. And broken about that. Okay, so I made this list last night, but uh, I only have one because I was tired, but I think it's the best favorite scene of all the Black Panther. It's uh, when, after he says he'll never freeze on that covert mission, he takes out a whole bunch of guys. Then he sees his ex-girlfriend, and he's like, and he freezes, and he's like, hi. <laughs> no, no, he, no, he literally says this. Hi. Exactly like that. Just long silence. Hi. Hi. You just had a little buzzing that was weird, so hi. So it begins. The romance is starting to become one of the sauce's favorite scenes. Oh, no! <laughs> See, I think Dad, you like the awkward. Okay, I think Dad, you like the awkward. I actually feel like I don't, I don't know you anymore. <laughs> anyway, you now it is Freya's girl's cover. turn. So it's when the child says, I never freeze, just like Willis. But when his sister asks Shuri? if he freezed, um, the Did lady you person says, he froze like an antelope in headlights. <laughs> <laughs> that was so great because you could tell they had a thing. Did he do it? Did he? Ah. <laughs> yeah, I really liked the Shuri scenes. She stole the scenes. She was very charismatic. Mm-hmm. Uh, the actress played her. And uh, the tech, He, she was very Tony Stark. So I'm wondering if we're going to get a Banner, Stark, Ooh. Shuri She'd be on moment. Par somewhere well and, and if you watch i mean there's there's some throwback for sure to the 007 movies like you felt she's very, cute totally you cute. felt very much like she was cute to, to t'challa but uh but yeah she was great she was fantastic good choice cool also you know my favorite lines one of my favorite lines was when he's testing out the new suit and sherry his sister is filming it and he gets beat because of all the kinetic energy he gets uh, thrown back which is amazing, yeah. which is just the exact same thing, if you think about it, that Cap's shield does. Yes. It rebounds the energy, but this one stores it technologically, and then upon will, shoves yeah. it out, which is pretty amazing. That is cool. He gets thrown back, and he's like, delete that footage. <laughs> <laughs> That was, she's recording it. He, she's like, uh-uh. That had the whole, that had us all busting up. That was great. I love the scene where T'Challa takes the second of his herbs to become the Black Panther and be healed at that point. But, and then he visits the dreamscape and confronts his father. How could you have left that child there, that boy alone? How could you have done that? Right. And his father says, we we have to protect our own. And T'Challa looks at all the former Black Panthers. You all did this wrong. I love the delivery of that because, you know, he's coming into his own. He knows it was wrong. 
But now he's finally saying, no, and I'm not dying right now because I have to go back and fix this mess y'all made. And he says, I can't rest here in peace knowing that we made this mess. Yes, I really and like that. It was a beautiful scene. It was it was very good. The flashback when T'Chaka kills his brother. The actor that played T'Chaka was the actor's who plays the old T'Chaka's son. So he wasn't digitally altered. Mm. That was actually his son playing his dad 30 huh. years ago. Interesting. Yeah. So that's why he looks so similar, but not quite the same. And he's like, and he, he has the same voice inflection and everything because mm-hmm. he is his son. John Connie, K-N-I, I think I'm pronouncing that uh, properly. And it was his son who played the young T'Chaka. Nice. That's cool. Very cool. I think that's the way uh, you can really DH people when they look when they look similar. That's like that's like back when uh, Ray Fiennes when his nephew played a young a young Voldemort. It was just a Fiennes yeah. kid, and you're just like whoa. So I like when they do that when they're able to incorporate that and they just really make it like no, this is believable because right. well they are played. What I did like was Claw being completely crazy. <laughs> he was crazy. I mean, like he was just bonkers nuts and over the top and i thought that was amazingly good that was he and he uh, he's always going to be a very strong actor he did a really good job with that i'm kind of sad we won't see him anymore well unless he gets brought back in some way i don't know how because killmonger pretty much shot him dead well they showed him dead yes they opened the body bag ah yes but they couldn't have him spit up a little blood (laughs) anyway i'm gonna harp on this until i get an apology letter directly from disney from Mickey? From Mickey himself. Mickey, you heard it here. I really liked uh, the general, and I liked the point in the final battle. She's probably my favorite part of the final battle, where, I mean, she stops the rhino, and because that's that's her lover up there, and they the rhinos basically live with them, so the rhino's not going to run her over. But that was the one weakness that rhino had, and her husband gets down, and she's holding him at spear point, and he's like, you know, what, are you going, you're not going to kill me over Wakanda? She goes, for Wakanda. I would do anything, basically. Yeah, that's not exactly... I think, or oh, you bet I would, or something like that, right? Yes. It was something... I can't remember. I anymore. would for Wakanda, or something like that. But just in the fierceness and right. the emotion in her that she knows she's she'd have to choose between the two things she loves, she's going to choose her country over this man. And that was... I really liked that. That moment was... Ooh! Plus, right. woman power. Do you guys have a favorite fight? I said no. No? No. So, my favorite fight, I don't have one because I, I can't remember. Seven so, it's no. Right. Because this goes around to my favorite scene is the casino fight. Mm-hmm. And a major battle there, which coincides with the Stanley cameo, which I'll get your kids input on here. But I liked how they went in with no weapons or their hidden weapon. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, super human strength really the black panther strength it was very suave talking about james bond that was very james bond he puts down a million dollars in chips whatever that was the top chip was a hundred thousand chip and it looked like yeah. there's 10 of them and he wins and then at least in the stan lee cameo we'll just put these over here for safekeeping shall we <laughs> right such a cool old gambler move you know and he's nobody again he's just a dude he's just a dude he's not playing somebody famous he's not playing himself or whatever there was the other Stanley cameos which we haven't discussed in our podcasts where in Guardian of the Galaxy 2 he's actually one of the watchers he's not human and that's why he is everywhere he's watching all of this for the race of the watchers it's yeah. a comic reference who? Stan Lee yeah. when but- we get there we'll go over that again yeah but going through those were major battles and, you know, our favorite scenes, kind of crossing it together. What did you think about your favorite battles, favorite scenes? So I'm torn about favorite battles. I really did. I loved, and I'm going to kind of lump it in the same thing, casino battle plus car chase. I thought those were exceptionally well done. I thought the timing was great. Action was great. Uh, it was wonderfully edited. Excellent Music effects. was amazing. It was really good. Right. But I really did like the ritual battles. I thought those were so beautiful. I liked that, just the the culture around it. I loved I loved the backdrop of the tribes. I loved how they represented the different tribes approaching to say, "Do you challenge?" No, we do not challenge at this time. Um, Mbaku do, challenging um, T'Challa and that battle, and then later, yes, the ritual uh, battle between Killmonger and T'Challa. I thought those were great. It was just a really 
felt very epic to me. Right. Um, and, and those are straight from the comics. Those are pulled from the pages of the comics. Those artists drew things that were just like it that. It was so cool. I, yeah. I really liked how they presented that and the whole withdrawing, you know, they made T'Challa give up, you know, the power of the Black Panther to have those battles. So you knew he was on the same footing, or on the same level, same playing field as his, his opponent. Right. I just really liked those a lot. I thought those were good. We're going to rate the Stan Lee cameo. We're going to start with... Me. I'm going to rate this a 10 out of 10. It was a perfect cameo. I, I don't remember his cameo. The casino where he steals all the chips. I'm of just going to... I'm going to over here. <laughs> yeah, so I, I rate that 9 point Whatever it is, we're going to call it 9.9 out of 10. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'd give it a 9 out of 10. It was really good. Actually, no, I'm just going to give it a 10 out of 10. I can't think of anything that would have made it any better. Right. And how about the Furious Girl? 10, 10. She gives away 10s sparingly. Sparingly. So she loved that one. That was a good one. Wait, I changed it to 10 as well, so we all rate it a 10 out of 10. You got a 9.9. 9. 10, 10, 10, 10. 10, 10 <laughs> okay. 10, 10. We've seen every other movie we've talked about at least twice, if not four or five times. Yeah, this is the first time we're reacting after this is a reaction podcast. Once. So we're moving through this quite quickly. We're going to talk about the mid-credits scene. Ah. That's the one where they're in front of the United Nations, and you're like, we're going to share our technology. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, they think that they're like... The yeah, one jerk so dude, right? Yeah, so the other people are like, oh, you guys are like poor. Maybe if you like trees and land you can give us. And the uh, one in, uh, complete jerk... It's like, what can you give us? And then right. uh, Ross smiles, mm -hmm. and all the Wakandans in there smile, and they're like... <laughs> a wry smile, for sure. It's like... Like you have no idea. Yeah, they're... So, they're Petty like, human beings. <laughs> Furious Girl, what did you think about that scene? I don't know, because I can't remember. Okay. What you were kind of tired. But like I, I gave it an 8 out of 10. Because you did your notes on this one, like a proper journalist. Yes. We'll go with the end credit after this one. Hello. Uh, yeah, I give that. I liked that one because, I don't know, I just liked it. I loved that it did kind of recognize that they were part of the world, but now they're going to be, like, actually be part of the world saying, well, let's tell you what we really have. It's a risk. I, I really liked that whole notion of... If we tell the world what we have, what's to stop them from coming in and taking it? It's like, well, and I, what did, there was like a line in there too, which might drive back to some of my favorite scenes and lines where someone said, we're strong enough to help the world and also defend ours. Right. And I really like that. So that, from that line to this moment where they're like, let's put all our cards on the table. And the fact that Wakanda was like, we have so much to offer you. We're pretty much your Asgard on this planet. Right. right? Now, Asgard does get destroyed in the comics. Mm -hmm. That hella destroying, com maybe not in that exact way, does happen in the comics, and they move to Oklahoma. <laughs> oh, my God. Right, because there's tons of fjords in Oklahoma. Um, if by fjords you mean tornadoes, then yes. So I think I would give it a probably an 8 out of 10. It was good. It was solid. Right. It does lead into the future of the MCU. It's going to change the world. Right now we have... Tensions around the world, of course, and, you know, tons of political strife, both in and outside the United States of America. It's going to change that. It's going to have to be an MCU where that doesn't really exist anymore, mm. where it's going to be more unified, especially what happens in the next movie. I, that's interesting that you mentioned that. Do you guys think that, I mean, Wakanda's got... I want to say Asgard level weapons that the world does not have. I mean, I don't even know Tony Stark. You know, you did you guys hear the bicep? By the way, beep, when uh, Claw was doing this, it shooting. was the same special same. deck. Do you? I wonder if then if Wakanda is really gonna gonna help with the world if they will actually elevate the weaponry of the planet as far as defense for when. Thanos well, will they have time? Because I think Thanos comes pretty quickly after this. Okay, so I think that Claw's. I think it's more like... Uh, it's different. No, I think it's more like Hydra's weapons. <laughs> like so it's based on a different technology. That's right. It's the same company doing the same special effects, so it's going to be like that. So, because we are not special effects. We're not Ben Burt. Anyway. Burt. He's the one that did all his Star Wars special effects. He came up with the lightsaber sound. <gasps> So I'm going to give, you know, if I was going to write this, I'd write it at eight as well because it does push the story forward. It changes the MCU mm -hmm. into more of a fantastical way. Um, now I'm going to go to the end credit scene. The end credit scene wakes up 
with a couple of kids poking some dude, and that dude ends up being Bucky, <gasps> the Winter Soldier. Yeah. And they're just poking him like he's all right. And they call him the White Wolf, which is a comic reference to the leader of the War Dogs for Wakanda. Right. Now, does he become the leader of the War Dogs for Wakanda in the future movies? And yeah, probably not. I'm going to say probably not. I, I think, think they, they just probably used... just threw, threw that in as a throw. Right. Because they're going to pull the War Dogs home and not have the War Dogs going forward. So they use that reference as fan service in a, in a way that fan service should be done. So what did you guys think about seeing the Winter Soldier and what he says at the end credit scene? What did he say again? 10 out of 10. Duh. He says, yeah, well, we can could, we could call you, you know, the soldier and it's call me Bucky. Oh. Yeah, so he, he's, he's like, he's remembered who he is. Maybe Shuri's technology has pulled him back. Mm -hmm. You know, it took a, a shot spine and healed it in 24 hours. So, children. Yes. Rate the end scene. 10 out of 10. She loved it? I don't know. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to look up the White Wolf when we get home. I can't remember what it referenced. Yeah, he was so into you it. You didn't let me. It was Because it was late, man. Yeah. And I looked it up for you. Okay. <laughs> uh, I would also say 10 out of 10. It was... Bucky is one of my favorite. Very pitiable characters. And so I, it was really cool to see that. <gasps> so they, that Wakanda played a... And if you guys remember... Uh, at the end of Civil War, they put him, uh, basically T'Challa and Steve are standing there and T'Challa is basically saying, we'll take care of him. Right. And he's frozen and you're just like, okay, they're going to freeze him. Because that's what Bucky had said. He's like, just freeze me. I can't be trusted. Freeze me until you need me again. That is not what they did. They they healed him. Well, he was saying freeze me until it, it can be remedied. Yeah. And so it sounds like yeah. they remedied it, which is so cool. That's not exactly what he said, but that was what he was intending. I can't remember the actual line. Yeah. I really liked it. Now, we're going to get into something here. We're going to go over the wait, actual no, rating. Okay. Can you say something? I wanted to say something. I think that Siri or someone actually uh, makes another arm for him, maybe. Mm. So oh, yeah. Fight. Well, no, we see that because in the Avengers Infinity War trailer, Bucky, Winter Soldier, is running right alongside Rogers with a new arm. Well, is it a human arm? Or no, human? it's a it's a full mechanical arm. So made of vibranium. Ooh. We're thinking it's a vibranium arm. Ima like oh. imagine. Now in the comics, Steve Rogers dies, and Bucky becomes the new Captain America. Right. Like this happens no, in the that's comics. Cool. I don't think they'll do that in the MCU. I uh -huh. think that's too much of a stretch. But I think what they do is they make they make Bucky a uh, more sympathetic Captain America like hero alongside. He's Steve. very sympathetic. And right. so I just want to say that. The government is still probably after Barnes. They're probably I, I, all still after yeah, yeah. Uh, Steve Rogers, too. I had a few rating systems in mind. We always go out of 10. Yes. Some things. I thought about Killmonger Kill Scars, because when he took Ooh. off his shirt, you could see all the people he murdered, and he was proud of all those murders yep. or assassinations or kills. I'm like, yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah. Then I thought about 10 out of 10 heart-shaped flowers that gives the panther his power from the vibranium. Yeah. Then I thought about 10 out of 10 vibranium meteors. But we're going to go out of 10 times T'Challa gets stabbed, because he got stabbed a lot in this. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. So T'Challa stabbings is the rating. <laughs> I will have to say, like, I read it at 8.7, didn't I? 8.7 out of 10. Stabbing T'Challa, so I stabbed him 8.7 times. 8.7 out of 10. I stabbed him 8.7 8 times. 8.7 T'Challa stabbed. You did not actually stab him. Yes, I did. No, these are, these are times he got stabbed by other people. I still stabbed him. Anyway. Because you're a boy. <laughs> uh, nine and a half out of 10. Stabs. All right. I just need to pause for a moment. I would like us to just remember back about 20 minutes ago when the data bite said, you kids really didn't like this movie. I know. Right, Dad? Because you guys wouldn't talk to me about it. <laughs> Dad? Because you, I'm trying to, I was trying to get you to talk to me about it. Guess who wouldn't talk? Because we were sleeping. So, this afternoon? <laughs> yes. No. Maybe they were being secretive and be like, we're not going to tell you. Until okay, then. one, all the times you did try to get us out of it, which wasn't this afternoon, we were half asleep. Dawn was actually asleep. <laughs> she was literally asleep. So those are some high scores, I right. would say. Yeah, right, yeah. so I stand corrected. Of course. They liked it more than I did. Mm -hmm. I gave it an 8 out of 10. Uh, 8 out of 10 uh, T'Challa stabbings. Stabbings of T'Challa. Okay, stabbings of T'Challa, T'Challa stabbings. Mm -hmm. What about you? 
Seven and a half. I did seven and a half because it got slow in the middle. Yes. No, that makes sense. It it did. Uh, there were a couple places I thought the editing could have shored that up a bit. Right. I actually thought of a few, but... And I thought that the end war scene between the tribes did not serve the movie. Okay. Now, I think there needed to be a little bit more humor. There was a lot of humor. Right. But like I said, it wasn't lull, Ragnarok. The lull, in the, <laughs> it doesn't need to be Ragnarok funny because that went a little too far. <laughs> you missed some things because you were laughing so hard. Yes. Get so hard. <laughs> now, I think there just should have been a little bit more throughout the whole thing to keep it lighter. Or actually go full on a little bit darker. I, I think it was just where it ended up being was a little too gray as far mm-hmm. as how much humor it is. But what hit, hit well. Yes. Like when M'Baku, M'Baku was, uh, they're all having their moment at the end. Oh, thank you. You done? Are yeah. you done now? <laughs> Are you done? Yeah. Can you like leave now? And right before that, you know, uh, Everett K. Ross's character was a little out of place. He's yeah. Like, I don't really know what's going on here. You, you can just tell me like, he's a little uncomfortable because who wouldn't be when you find out there's this hidden technologically advanced tribe who is supposed to be a third world country that can has like hovering things and now we have they're in the gorilla tribes. And you're in the midst of a of a coup and <laughs> Yeah, a whole military coup that can destroy the world. He's kind of a little overwhelmed. And then, you know, Mbaku's like, you can be quiet or I'm going to feed you to my children. And he was all like fierce. And he's like, ah, oh. you can see his face. You know, Martin Freeman's face is just priceless. <laughs> that and was a great line, is, too. Ah, I'm a vegetarian. Ha. You know? <laughs> that was a great line. You're going to feed you to my children. We're like, whoa. Right. Oh, all right, then. <laughs> that so was good. I thought, yeah, I thought, you know, they went so dark when Claw dies. Mm-hmm. Right. And he's showing Killmonger's Killmongerishness. But then right before that, it was... Claw being, oh, he's laughing at yeah. things blowing up around him. You know, I did. I thought they played the dialogue for the white characters in here, not dumbing them down mm-hmm. to make someone else look better. Right. Which is easy to do when you have a racially divided, a racially potent movie. Mm-hmm. You can easily do something like that. And right. I thought they did well making Everett K. Ross, Alex P. Keaton's great nephew, whatever that is, they made him... A fish out of water, but not an idiot. Right. Which I think is hard to do, and Martin Freeman pulled it off. Yeah. And just in my two cents, he is out of he has a better American accent than Benedict Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch. To just wrap this, bring this back full circle, wrap this up. So we've given you guys our unposit crew's overall overview, uh, ratings, and everything, and our thoughts. What we're gonna start doing with a lot of our future, you know, immediate reaction podcasts. So this is talking about like a release of a movie happens, we're able to immediately react to it. We've already had several of our friends, uh, local and beyond, ask if they can be parts of our podcast going forward. I know, I know, we have Alex from church really wants to be in, in on our. Star Wars ones. I know a couple people from work want to do that too. For this particular podcast, I did reach out to a family of friends that I have in Memphis, Tennessee, and I actually got on a Skype call with them to hear their feedback. I'm unmuting. I'm laughing at your cat. (laughs) No, he's... Well, he'll be back because anytime I'm on video, he's like, hey, I need to be in this. And I'm like, you do not. Yeah. <laughs> he's supposed to go to Chuck E. Cheese. And I was just thinking, I was like, why don't they sell like adult beverages at Chuck E. Cheese? Because you need they them. not. Because I, I feel like they started putting beer at some right. of them. Well, I don't know that. Well, you know what? They hadn't done it here. They probably was like, nah, Memphis, y'all just can't handle it. I try to avoid Chuck E. Cheese's at all costs. So <laughs> it's, it spawns demons those kids are evil i witnessed so many crimes <laughs> his coins and then another little boy came up and said and snatched him and ran off <laughs> and i was like what is this <laughs> i don't go i mostly don't go because anytime we go eventually some kids somewhere is like mom why is why is this so wet over here and it's oh, yeah. because some child is yeah. Not patients and not gone to the bathroom when they should have gone to the bathroom. So. Yeah, that's gross. Right. Yes, I know. Uh, on that note, let's uh, let's proceed out of that. Um, uh, introduce yourselves, first name and age. So I'm Vanita. I am 41. I'm Taylor, and I am 15. What is one word you would use to describe Black Panther after seeing it? Taylor, you want to go first? Marvelous. Marvelous. Last now, last week you said shook. <laughs> yeah. That too. That too. 
<laughs> Jim, what about you, V? Dude, I still say groundbreaking. I think it was just, it was beyond amazing. What was one, what was one of your favorite scenes? Taylor, I'll start with you. One of your favorite scenes in the movie? Any scene with his little sister. Shuri? Yes, she was just amazing. She, it was so cool to see her in this position, like, I know all the things and all the tech mm-hmm. that is going to make your life easier. So that, mm-hmm. that was pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Go see it again. <laughs> <laughs> what about, Vinita, what's one of your favorite scenes? Um, my scene was when Okeo, I think that's, a, I can't ever say her name right, but the general was in the car in the chase scene. <laughs> And so there's just like her on top of the vehicle during this chase with this red gown just blowing behind her. I mean, like that, that was just visually stunning. That was my favorite. And when they were in the club and they're fighting and she was like, takes off this bad wig and she throws it at the dude. <laughs> 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 so I mean, it's, just, it's beautiful. I think that somebody's got like a t-shirt now that's floating around the internet and it's like a picture of her in that gown with the spear. And I was just like, I need that. I need that in my life. Yeah. How'd you feel? Cause she, I, I would have to say, I think she's my favorite character. Um, her lover is like coming up on the rhino and she stands in front of the rhino. And I'm like, Oh my God, is she going to fight the rhino? How'd you, how'd you feel about when she faces down her, her boyfriend with that spear and you know, she has to basically choose between him and Wakanda. Like, I mean, you know what? He made bad choices. So I'm like, I'm not even mad at that. It's like, dude, where, really? This is what we're doing. Uh-huh. You know, I was not mad at that. I was like, well, you're going to choose today, son, aren't you? You're going to choose today. <laughs> Taylor, what, was Shuri your favorite character? Of course. I remember uh, your mom has put out that uh, she thinks Shuri should be the new uh, symbol for the Black Girls Code, I think, and we talked a little bit about that. Yeah. Do you think that's fitting as far as like her being kind of leading that, that tech movement for Black girls coding and getting into, into uh, STEM and stuff like that? Yeah, I actually did a Black Girls Code program. I want to learn to code. <laughs> I want to learn. So the fact that you're doing it, was it fun? Yeah, it was fun. I got to make like a little game. It's, it's it had something while. to do with carrots. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been like well over a year, I think. Yeah. Well, y'all heard it here. Taylor's going to be coding and, you know, doing it especially for a while. <laughs> We were talking about our favorite battle scenes uh, when we did the podcast. I don't know if you guys want to talk about that too, how you felt about the ritual combats and stuff. And uh, because you talked about that a little bit last week too. Yeah, I did. So like for me, it was just really cool because you've got all of this infusion of tech. And then there's just this one piece that is still, and not maybe just one piece, there's plenty of pieces, but there's just this one part and that whole scenery and imagery where it's just basically, it's, you know, it's cultural, it's, you know, tradition, and it's all woven in there to show that the two can coexist. And I think a lot of times we think that you either have to have tech and science, or you've got to have, you know, tradition, and that there is no marrying the two, and they show that you can do both. I like them because of the little dances that they did on the rock, where they were like, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> That was so cool. Well, it built yeah, the intensity a ton. Yeah. She says she and her friends are doing that now at school. <laughs> Um, we went on a college tour like the other day and when we were on Vanderbilt's campus one of the people from our school they had on the daishiki and so they saw her with the daishiki and they just yelled out Wakanda forever and then all of us did Wakanda forever (laughs) that's awesome I have a hashtag board at my uh at my work and I put Wakanda day on it um which I hadn't seen the movie yet and everybody's like what do you what is that and I'm like are you new? Do you not know what's coming? Yeah. Come that, yeah. <laughs> Again, I think everything that they did just visually was fantastic. Like, you know, I don't know what the Oscars qualifications are for giving people, you know, an Oscar, but, you know, that was pretty dope to me. But yeah. I just think, like, you've got rhinos coming out of somewhere. It's like rhinos. Like, and I saw him with the rhinos initially. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> we got battle rhinos. <laughs> But just that entire thing and watching, I wasn't prepared for Shuri coming out, guns blazing. Like, I just didn't really, I don't know what I expected, but I just wasn't expecting that. 
you know, and then you've got Nakia coming out in Dora clothing. And she's like, I'm not a Dora, but I mean, here she is. Despite all her humanitarian efforts, like she's going to town. It, it's just, that that is fantastic. And then having Black Panther come up, you know, finally is like, oh, you know, here I am. I'm that back. So cool. Like you're like, well, yeah. I did not, I did not yield, and as you can see, I am not dead. That was so cool. Yeah. Oh my, oh my god, oh my god, it's on now. Yeah. So. <laughs> Killmonger, uh, being being the villain, basically, we were like making up our top, our list of top ten villains in the Marvel universe, and Killmonger made it in the top ten as far as like one of the best developed, authentic, just really you know, pardon me, kick-ass, uh, you know, villains that's out there. But um, what do you guys think of, uh, T- Taylor, what do you think of Killmonger as a, as a villain um, going up against Black Panther and really the whole the whole Wakandan um, tribes and stuff? He wasn't, like, your typical villain. Like, nobody would have thought that he would have been from Wakanda until he pulled down his little lips. And I was like, what? <laughs> I liked some of the stuff he was talking about as far as, like, maybe even going too far, but he's like, we can't just keep Wakanda tech here by ourselves. It's our duty to go out and help other, you know, people out there. What'd you guys think about that? Well, I mean, I thought, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting because every once in a while I look at it from this, you know, entire lens of black struggle, black liberation struggle. Right. And so you've got like a good contrast between Brooke T. Washington, W.E.B. Du Bois. So it's that same question about what's the best way to help people and to move everyone forward. And so I thought that he had some really good points. Like what's the point of being this really powerful nation if you've got the means by which to help others you know how do you do that and I think even for Americans we find that whole contrast too it's like we've got issues here why are we now the world's police and you have T'Challa asking you know or just grappling with the fact so once we do this we invite people in we invite folks in to possibly take advantage of us. We invite in war. Are we going to be going out here using our weaponry and military to, you know, fight other people's battles where you've got somebody like Nikki saying well, we can help, we can actually help people. And so it's just, it's a real struggle. And I think Killmonger brings a good perspective to that. It's like, what's the use of being an advanced nation when there are other people who are struggling? I think that he and Nikki are on the same wavelength there as far as what they're supposed to be doing and how they should be helping others. Um, now, Killmonger, Killmonger goes radically, right. you know, way left. Now, we're going we gonna to kill everybody. Like, right. we're going in, you know, we're going to be on top. <laughs> you know, and it's just, like, there are, like, levels to this, and he's, like, already at level 100. Like, now nah, we just we wiping them all out. We can do this. And, you know, and should we be doing that? Right. Or maybe we should. I don't know. You know, like, you know, he has some valid concerns there. So. You guys talked about the difference between kind of the dreamscape sequence when after you've got T'Challa takes the black, you know, the, the, the herb, oh, yeah. he goes and sees, you know, the Black Panthers and his, his uh, deceased father. Then you've got Killmonger takes the black herb or the herb later, and he goes in his dreamscape and sees just a totally different scene with his dad, which was really heartbreaking. What do you guys think of the differences between you know just seeing those two scenes? Um, I thought I thought I thought that that was gonna be in like the same area, but I didn't know that it was based on like where they where their ancestors left off it, and it was kind of sad because like that's all he knows from his father. But I thought it was cool that, I, but I thought it was interesting that like his father could only see him as a kid instead of like his grown. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. kind of sad. Yeah, yeah. I gotta say too, I loved when T'Challa on his second dreamscape and he how he calls out the Black Panthers like you guys are wrong, and and actually taking what you know Killmonger you know part of what he had said was like it's wrong of us to keep this to ourselves. It's wrong of us to leave people out and mm-hmm. instead of trying to go help them with our tech. And so I, I like that he, he found that new path, even if he yeah. had to go up against Killmonger for it, right? I think, you know, I think he had been kind of pushed there anyway. I think Nakia, you know, just was had some influence on him there. But I think just really kind of seeing Killmonger and watching that and you know, having to question it for himself and then discovering, you know, what happened, how, like, he felt like his father was responsible 
for yeah. who the person who killed Monger was, right? That you left him here. Why didn't you bring him back? Yep. You know, you, you it just, you left him. And so you've helped, you helped create where we are right now with this kind of villain. So, you know, and I think that that's true again, if I like expand that outside of just, just the movie, but we see it in, you know, all of the wars, right? And that yep. some piece of something helped create one thing that became this domino effect of how we end up in the mess that we're in and how you have to be careful about what it is that you're trying to do. Yeah. Uh, so it's, you know, good intentions gone bad, mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing. That's right. Definitely inspires you to treat your siblings better. Does it not, Taylor? <laughs> like, treat your, treat your family members, be like, oh, I don't know. Maybe some days she'd like come back at me and be like, what's going on? <laughs> You see, I have been a great big sister. When I was out of town, I brought her back some peeps, and she still do me wrong. <laughs> Can y'all wait for Infinity War, though? Because this is going to be, I mean, no. Black Panther's amazing, but now it's all going to come together. And, oh, seeing, seeing the general in the fight with all the, <laughs> I cannot wait. Oh, yeah, now I cannot wait. I mean, it's just like, it's, although I'm scared, but I kept, you know, like, thinking about Infinity War, I'm like, okay, so if Tony Stark doesn't make it out, but we got Shuri, right? So we can continue, like, tech advances. We got Shuri. Somebody make sure that she's safe. Yeah, build a wall around Shuri. We need Shuri. Right. You know, Tony, you've been cool, man, but, you know, you got to tap out. I understand. We got somebody to back you up, though. We got somebody. <laughs> well, can, can you wait? Taylor, imagine Shuri, if she gets to meet up with Tony Stark and Bruce Banner, I mean, because she's on their level, if not above it, but can you yeah. imagine that meet up where, like, they're all talking tech with each other, and she's like... I bet they're going to be, like, they're going to be, like, surprised as to what she can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was still kind of salty about the fact that um, Mubaku was like, you've entrusted your technology to a child. I'm like, dude. Right? Have you like man, you know, he was he was good i thought that you know it was interesting for him to come out and challenge you know when t'challa was being crowned and then to just you know show up like no nah, no nah, i'm not doing i'm not doing and then all of a sudden you hear them like oh my god yes you know i don't know that that means that they will remain cool right. but you know, just kind of one of those things like all right we, we can come help this time well, and you get you get a hint of that too. If you know they have their ritual uh, combat, and T'Challa finally is going to dominate him, and he could kill him. And you hear him, dude, yield right now. Your people need you, and he does yield. He doesn't say, "Ah, forget you, just kill me." He he sees that. No, you're right. I gotta. I may. I wish I would have, yeah. but I, I do need to go lead my people. So yeah, there's some nobility there, where he's like, you can yeah. tell maybe there was a path that he was going to come back and help, right? I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know that I really expected him to come back and help. I, I just, I didn't, but I do think that he was definitely noble and that he, you know, was like, all right, well, we pulled the, we pulled old boy out the water. Mm -hmm. We put him on ice for you, you know, see what you can do. Nah, I ain't helping. All right. Oh, let, me, <laughs> let, me, let me do one time, you know, like, you know, but I don't know that I expected him to. Yeah. Um, I was glad that he did. I just didn't expect him to. I liked the uh, where it's like, be quiet or I'll feed you to my children. What was that? Uh, oh, I was going to ask you guys. Oh, God, where'd it go? It was in my brain just now, and then my son threw me off. Hang on. Yeah, you did. You did. It's fine. You threw me off. It's fine. <laughs> oh, uh, we talked last time, too, and you guys, you know, I hadn't seen it yet, and I'd seen all kind of predictions and stuff. The fact that you didn't see an Infinity Stone which everybody thought the soul stone would be in Wakanda and you didn't see it. We have our, we actually had our own um, theory about that. You got that. the same theory now too? So like, I Help talked yours. to one of my coworkers, he's like, you don't think that the herb is really the soul stone? Yes, that makes all the sense right in the world. Right. Yeah. It does. I mean, because we were looking at it all like, well, after they took it, they went on this like soul kind of journey and it turns, I'm like, it could, so we do, we think that the soul stone is part of what spawns the, uh, the herbs. So, yeah. So, but now here's a question. If Killmonger burned down everything and they only took the one and they used it, I, I don't know. It's not gone. I, it's, I, I mean, 
obviously that did happen, but we're like, I don't know. I think if there's more to it, there's probably going to be, what if there's mm-hmm. another, they, maybe they didn't find all of the ways and places in Soul Stone. Right. Maybe like the fire, like, help drop seed. Because like wildfires and trees, mm-hmm. like you need wildfires to get more trees. That's right. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Point, yeah. That's right. Well, and the, the ether um, being one of the stone, soul stones in that form, but um, that did the same thing where it would like protect itself from being destroyed. Mm-hmm. So, see, so I am, that is exactly what we thought. Yeah. Too. Like, I think it is in Wakanda and we just have it seen an actual stone but it's because some of the battle things from the trailer are in wakanda right yeah so yeah mm-hmm. and oh my gosh can we wait for shuri to develop the uh cap's new shield out of vibranium oh my gosh right so right cool. yeah. Ooh, there's so much so much there i cannot wait see so y'all gonna have to go see it again today you're gonna go see it again today maybe I, yeah, I think so. I think I think we we can see it today. We probably will. Yeah, you can see it. You guys got all you guys got all decked out to go see the movie last time. Taylor, you broke code to dress up for for uh, going to see Black Panther, right? What did you do? I was at a uniform that day when I wasn't supposed to be, but it was okay because you know at the end of the day I had actually unzipped my jacket because I was hiding it. But then I had got hot, so I just said, I, I, was, I unzipped my jacket, and I said, oh, well, whatever. I don't care. Like, I mean, it's, it's a national holiday, basically. So. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you guys enjoy it? Like, you know, so what, what was, like, your favorite? I, I loved every part of it. Um, we did feel like it dragged a little bit in the middle, like, when it got to more of the exposition stuff and the more dramatic stuff. Um, but I felt like the battle, battle scenes more than made up for it. Um, Again, it gave us one of the strongest villains I think we've seen uh, throughout yeah. the whole MCU. So well developed. You saw a total background to the origin story even of it. And and I really liked, we liked the complexity of, you know, T'Challa having to kind of find his own way and saying, you know, I, mm-hmm. I've got a history of Black mm-hmm. Panthers behind me. Yep. Doesn't mean I have to do the same thing y'all did. You know, we need a new way forward. Um, right. But man, it was, I love what you said too. I think what, what I loved the most was it was that blending of culture and tech where, and just this stinking scenery was beautiful and they just oh, gave so much thought to every scene. They had a little bit of comedy. I know Maya said he would have liked a little more comedy. Just, of course, we're coming off Thor Ragnarok is the last one we saw. So, whoa, that yeah. was heavy on the comedy. Maya and Willis both liked when uh, <laughs> when Shuri is, you know, he's ha- she's having T'Challa kind of look at the, the suits, right? And he picks the one and she's like, and he punches it and he knocks it out. She goes, Senator, punch it in the same place. And she starts recording. <laughs> he's like, what are you doing? You're recording this? And she's like, for, for, for research. <laughs> and then he like knocks it, <laughs> boom, across the floor. Erase <laughs> that recording. <laughs> That was so funny. It was like, oh my God, that's hilarious. I mean, it's just so, like, the ribs on him. I mean, it was so very much like Big Brother, kid sister, like, vibe the entire way through that. It was hilarious. I loved it. Yeah. It was so good. And then uh, when she when she flipped him off, you know, later, they're like, did he freeze? Like an, like, Georgia liked that one. Like an antelope in the headlights. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> We, we did really was, like it. The characters yeah. were, were so, were all really well developed. It was really good. And the kids, I think the yeah. kids actually, uh, they outscored it from us. Like, I think I gave it like a 7.9, like an average of adults was like an 8 out of 10. The kids like got it mm-hmm. up to like a 9 out of 10. I think it was one of their favorites uh, combined. So it really enjoyable and obviously just awesome next step in, in the Marvel Universe. And then again, I mean, um, enjoyable on all fronts because it had such a, a larger message and it was awesome. Yeah, like I said, I mean, it's just, there's just so much in between there. And there are actual real things that you need to consider about how you approach the world and what your duty is in the world and what leadership that you need. So I just really enjoyed it for the larger context there. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I still really love the ending, you know, yeah. because even in all of this, you know, T'Challa's like, Killmonger's on his last leg, and, you know, he's like, I, we can save you, though, right? You know, like, and he's like, no, nah, no, nah, you yeah. know, bury me in the ocean. 
Yeah. Or my ankles would jump from the ship. I was like, oh my God, yes. You right. know, because that's that's a real, you know, that's real. That I, I don't know how you get more realer than that, right? You yeah. know, because that's something that actually happened. And people are like, well, why are they killing? They know. You know what fate you know, awaits you um, for bondage. And it's just like, no, that's that's okay. And so for him just to go out saying that, it's like, man. Yeah. Ooh, brother, you are deep. It you was know. deep. It was really good. It was awesome. You were extra, but you were deep. <laughs> <laughs> Any last thoughts you guys uh, want to share, Taylor? Anything else? I know last time you guys were like, everybody should go see it all the time, but anything else that you want to share about it? I'm so happy to go see it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like people are going back. Like, yeah. so I'm, I'm definitely going to see it again. I, I intend to have that on DVD because I need to be able to watch it whenever. I like like Spider Man Homecoming. Like, I thought that that was kind of funny and cool because I'm a big Spider Man person. So, you know, I got a little worried when they were going to reboot it again. I'm like, oh, you guys have been disappointing me of late. But it was, Homecoming was really good. So I was like, all right, that's cool. And yeah. so now I, I would want that too. Yeah. So. No, I'm with you. Spider-Man, he's one of my favorites because he's always, he's so sassy. You know, he's like always yeah. has, I'm going to quip my way through New York and just make sure I have a comment for everything. I'm like, that. that's. Yep. Yeah, right. Obviously, people are going back to see it. So, um, yeah, and obviously, people are. And then there are the people who like just didn't get a chance to see it. So they're yeah. looking at us like, "Oh, we saw you on Facebook. You saw it." And it's like, "Yes, and you need to go. Just, go right just now. stop <laughs> doing it and just go. Just go and enjoy it." And I'm sorry, y'all had like a crappy screen experience because we saw it in IMAX. Great, and uh, that was freaking amazing. So it's like you know that was the only way to go. And people were doing like several. I should have gone, but I had other stuff to do. But people were doing like several premieres and yep. seeing it again, and I was like, "So is this an IMAX? You know, are y'all going to are y'all going to do this premiere in IMAX or no? Oh, you're not in IMAX. No, nah. <laughs> I don't want to see that. Not if it's not an IMAX. <laughs> so we've decided. I think like just us as a family, there is no way that we're watching any more MCU movies. Yeah unless we're in IMAX, like that's, yeah. that's done. Like, I think I'm probably going to start completely over leading up to Infinity War and I'm just going to watch everything again because after we saw Black Panther, I was like, okay, well, I want to see Civil War again because when we saw Bucky in the, in, at the cutscenes, I was like, you know what, let me go back and watch Civil War again because I need to get ready yeah. For, yeah, for Infinity War. Ladies, thank you for making up this time for me. You can listen and be like, ah, it's us. Okay. <laughs> Half hour screen times for the kids this week, starting tomorrow for Furious Girl. Lost Legacy. Lost Legacy, PS4. That's a good one. You're farther in that than I am, for Way sure. Way farther than I am, too. Dot, dot, dot. Remains to be seen. I think he will have half hours this week. His grades are coming up. Yay! I'm out. I have I've said all the things I meant to say. Right, it does lead into as we end our podcast. It does lead into directly Avengers: Infinity War, which is the next release, May fourth, two thousand eighteen. Two and a half months, not a long time to uh, really wait for this one. May fourth is Marvel's weekend. That's when Civil War comes out. That's when Ultron came out. That weekend of the May is when all that happens. Uh, this ties right into it. Bucky being the very end credits does pull it back. Everett K. Ross pulls it back. We are going to have other than MCU podcasts going forward. Um, We're going to have a Minecraft podcast. A Minecraft. The kids teaching us how to play Minecraft because I've never played it. And now I've we have it on our Nintendo Switch and I've after we came up with this idea to do this, you know, teaching us thing, I did not even start playing it. So I've never played Minecraft. They're going to kind of sit down and walk us through how to play Minecraft. God help them. A couple of video game stuff. We're, I think as soon as Furious Girl finishes Lost Legacy, mm -hmm. we're going to have a Furious Girl Great Lost Legacy. I think we should. I mean, she's honestly, because like I've, I've played through that too, where I've heard her talk about points of it and I get to that point. I'm like, how did she get through this? 
So we'll find out. So we're going to do a podcast on that, some video games, pop culture. We're going to have a Denver Comic Con podcast. We are. We're going to be a presence at Denver Comic Con this year, uh, which is in mid-June, which we have to get our tickets. Um, but yeah, we'll be there. Keep an eye out for us. If you're going to Denver Comic Con, you'll see us by our logo, the little, the... I guess the pause and play, <laughs> the pause and play <laughs> logo. I'm like, what do I call that? Uh, right. The pause and play logo. But again, send us your stuff. If you guys have ideas for things you want us to review, uh, it might be games we've never tried before. Uh, we're more than happy to do that because like I said, we've got the full spread of ages and genders and perspectives here at unposit.com. Thank you for listening. Bye. Follow us on Facebook. Twitter or YouTube and visit us at Unpause.com.